and welcome back to the Reapers. Today we're in our L39 Albatross ZA and we're going to be looking at using the PRMG ILS system for landing in low visibility conditions. And we're going to roll several things into one here. We're going to be looking at the PRMG, which is a form of ILS instrument landing system. This allows you to approach and land on a runway without any visibility at all. Now we're going to simulate that today with the IFR hood. It's this hood, if we look back here, Stirl's going to be in the back seat of my aeroplane. He's going to lower this hood, which will cut off all of my visibility from out of my cockpit. And all I'll be able to see is my gauges. And I'm going to have to make do an instrument only landing. And that's what we're going to use our PMG, PRMG for. Now, uh, it's going to be a little more complicated than that. The PRMG system, or the ILS system, in this aircraft is coupled with another system known as RSBN. That is a more generic navigation system. So the RSBN gets you to places, the PRMG lands you on runways. Now, I've already done a, a video, a, a thorough comprehensive video of using the RSBN in this aircraft. So we're not going to cover the RSBN in any detail at all. We're just going to accept it's there and we're going to use it because to use the PRMG correctly you have to use the RSBN. We're going to, we're going to have three stages and this is very similar in a lot of aircraft even if it doesn't uh, seem it in a lot of ILS aircraft systems because a lot of them are automated but like the Vigan for instance. Uh, in this case we have to do the stages manually. Now here's our aircraft here. We want, we're heading in that direction, we want to land at Makop there, which is roughly uh, 25 miles away, about 35 kilometers away. We're going to do the first stage, which is actually, we're going to move, we're going to fly to about there, and we'll explain why in a minute, and then we're going to get to about there. So those two legs we're going to do with the RSBN on, if we look here, navigation mode. That's general navigation, nothing to do with an approach or a landing, just navigation. At this, roughly this point here, this leg here, to about 15 kilometers away from the end of the runway, we're going to be doing in, sorry that's being glitchy, I don't know why, we're going to be doing in this mode here, which is glide path, that is RSBN, not PRMG, not ILS. What that's going to do is it's going to take us from, as an intermediate mode, from our general RSBN, getting us into a position ready for our PRMG to take over. And the reason I'm saying it's coupled with RSBN is you have to be in that exact position there to be able to use PRMG. So that's why we have to use the RSBN first. When we've got to the end of this second leg here, 15 miles away, or 15 kilometers away from the threshold of the runway or thereabouts, it doesn't have to be, you know, perfectly exact. We are going to switch to our PRMG and that's this button here in landing mode that goes over to the PRMG, which is a separate system, completely separate from RSBN. And that is going to guide us down to landing. Now, the way the systems work in reality is RSBN is radio based and it is based on radio antennas. There will be radio antennas um, all around this area here. This is the Soviet part of the Caucasus map and DCS world. And if I were to click on Makeup here, you can see that it has an RSBN transmitter, a radio transmitter that allows us to navigate in terms of azimuth and distance. And we can see it here, it's channel 34 and it's Morse code Delta Golf. If we're, we're probably, we won't bother going into too much detail for the reasons I spoke earlier. Out of interest, it's also got a PRMG. Now, this is completely different. This is not beacon based. This is um, a separate system which will ha be housed along the runway here, maybe that building there, I'm not sure, one of these buildings. And it will be sent, you know, sorry, that's the. Uh, that's the RSBN building. There's another building here, and it sends a radiation beam backwards along the approach path to the final approach of the runway. And what we're going to do is we actually fly onto that beam of radiation and it guides us onto that beam of radiation in terms of azimuth and elevation to guide us all the way down to the foot of the runway. And so that's how the system works and that's how they're integrated together. Next, we need to start talking about how we're going to use them. So uh, in fact, before we do that, let's have a quick look at today's mission profile. We are currently here heading this direction. Uh, can't get it to work now, but heading in that direction there. We need to land on this runway. So the first thing is we cannot just go from where we are directly to Makeup. Our RSBN system in its default usage will take us directly to the RSBN station at Makeup, which is that angle there. Now that's no use. Um, but I'm not going to be able to see that runway. And if I come in at that angle, then I won't be able to land clearly. OK, so I have to come on what's known as a radial. A radial is simply the direction of the runway extruded. So that's the direction of the runway there. And I'm extruding it down here to where we are and that would be our radial line. So what we first, first have to do is fly to intercept that radial, which we'll do using our course um, lines on our HSI in collaboration with our RSBN guidance. Then once we've intercepted that radial, we'll fly that radial in our RSBN mode, and then we will continue flying that radial from our PRMG. 
and that will take us all the way down. So that explains what we're going to be doing and why we're going to be flying at this silly angle to begin with. So the next thing we want to do is to calculate that radial. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this runway here. I'm going to put a line there. I'm using this tool up here. I'm going to drag it, extrude it to the end of that runway. You can see at the top we've got, it's just being a bit fiddly at the moment, heading 039. 039 is the radial. Now, the next thing to notice is that that is a true heading, it's a map heading. The instruments on the aircraft, as a default, will read a magnetic heading. The magnetic heading is rarely or never the same as the true heading. So we need to do a quick conversion. Now, um, I have a table of different places in the world where the conversion is, but take my advice that on, in the Caucasus, in Georgia here, it is minus six degrees conversion. So we take it from... 039 true to 033 magnetic so that's the uh, that's the course that we're going to be flying on that magnetic heading of 033 to ensure that radial next thing we're going to do is start punching in numbers into our into our aircraft and start getting this thing on the go so what we're going to have is to look at the RSBN station number in here we click on here because it's RSBN channel 34 and we're not going to go into any further detail in that PRMG it does first of all it does have it because we've got it here. You can obviously only land PRMG at an equipped airfield. It's channel 36, Morse code DG. The Morse code is there to check that we're on the right channel. We won't be doing that today, but it's a thing there. And this is for runway 04, so this is the runway that we're going to be landing on. Next, we're going to head to our cockpit. Right, so we're in the cockpit now. What we're going to look at, first of all, while we've got it paused, is all of the instruments that we're going to be using to do this. So, let's get started. We will start over here. This is our master mode for changing our RSBN and PRMGs. Very simply, like I said before, in navigation, it's general RSBN navigation in glide path. It's the glide path part of the RSBN, and in landing, it's the PRMG ILS. Next, we've got the RSBN uh, panel here. We'll show you using it in a bit, but it's very simply, you turn this knob to tune into the RSBN navigation of channel 34, if you remember, and here is the PRMG. It does the same. You'll tune in to 36. Here are the two lights that show that we've connected to those stations and receiving navigation. There are other options here. We can control the volume up here if we're going to be listening to the Morse code, but we're not. And we've got other guys here, but we're not going to go any further into RSBN as we promised. Next, note that we need to set the QFE for the RSBN. The RSBN needs us to tell it where the elevation of the runway is that we're going to land. If we don't do that, then the glide path mode here won't work. It we have to tell it that. So the QFE is essentially telling the RSBN system what altitude the runway is. Now, there's two ways of getting that. One, we can calculate it if through incredibly difficult formulations and mathematics, and obviously we don't want to do that. So what we're going to do is to speak to the tower, the ATC, and ask him. And I put easy communications on just to make this video shorter and easier. So uh, I'm going to unpause. I'm going to press the comms button. ATC, make up we're landing at. Please uh, give me the QFE. Audience Listen. One, one. Inbound. Seven four four decimal two eight. Right. So while we remember that, let's go and quickly do that. So I'm just going to hover the mouse over here and scroll wheel to seven four four. So that is seven four there. That's seven five seven four four. So that's that done. I should say that uh, to ensure that your main circuit breaker for RSBN is turned on for this, uh, nothing's going to work without that. Also, we want to ensure that our MRP RV is on here. This will let us know when we are flying over inner and outer markers of the airbase, um, which is relevant to an approach like this. I don't think I've got any way of showing it here. So you'll have to take my word for it that outside of, off of the threshold along the approach, there are beacons. Uh, there are inner, usually inner and outer beacons. And essentially all they're there for is to give you ranging from the threshold. When we fly over them, we'll get an indication. And if I look up at my cockpit on the indicator lights, I may not be able to see there. See marker there? That says we're going over a marker. Um, and it's, again, it's to basically tell us without visual conditions how close we are to the runway. Now while we're on this panel here, we've also got the end of descent light. This will come on when this here, the glide path, is finished. So when the glide path is finished, we'll lose uh, symbology on this HSI, which we'll look at in a minute, and this marker light will come on, telling us we're at the end of the descent, we're ready to change over to PRMG. The only other controls that I want to show you are on the front of the dash here. Obviously, we'll be using all of these controls for general flight, but regarding the actual PRMG, we're going to be using the HSI here. Things we're interested in are this pointer here is going to take us to our 
uh, point of interest regards RSBN. So we're going to be using that to take us to a heading of RSBN heading. This is our course line here. We set this to the course line of a radial which we've calculated to 033. And we can turn it by change it by changing the knob there. And we'll look at that in a bit more detail in a bit. Also, we've got flags and guidelines. So we've got this up to down line here known as the localizer line. This is going to give us indication of azimuth. If it's in the middle, then our azimuth is good. If it's to the left or to the right, our azimuth needs adjusting accordingly. Note that it does not, the PRMG, it does not keep us on the correct heading per se. It keeps us on the correct radial. So not only will this uh, keep us pointed towards the runway, more importantly, it will keep us on the correct radial um, and that is important for understanding how it works and how you fly to it. Uh, we'll go for that in a bit more detail uh, later on. Glide slope, uh, similar, but for the out elevation, this is going to be a constantly decreasing elevation line, if you like, to guide us on the correct glide slope all the way, essentially, down to the tarmac. From memory, I think it glides you to the middle of the runway, but we'll see when we get a bit closer. Uh, so that's that. So obviously, you've got your um, heading numbers around here. And here is your distance um, to the RSBN station which is uh, uh, situated roughly in the middle of the runway. So those are the instruments that we're going to be using. I'm going to have Stahl sitting in my back cockpit, and he'll be, um, like I said, he'll be hooding me. Here's my uh, tutor. He's going to be tutoring me. I'm going to unpause it. Can you please IFR hood me? Mm -hmm. Oh, God, that's immediately horrific. But, okay. So we need to connect to our stations. Um, can you just, um, just make sure I don't fall out of the sky for a second, please, Stahl? I'm just going to connect to my RSBN stations. One. Right click I'm doing here, 3, 4 and 3, 6. First of all, I'm going to be doing, nav doing navigation only. And so I want in navigation mode there. We're collected, uh, we're, we're connected to the stations there because we've got the green light. Next, I'm going to check my attitude. It's good, tiny bit more up, nose up. Speed is good. A little bit of trim. i show my controls down the bottom left. I'm going to have to speak fast because a lot's going to happen quickly. Next, I want to set my course sign at 033. I'm going to use the mouse scroll on this wheel here to set our course radar to 033 i'm going to go in and check that so we've got three four five so a little bit back there can you see these adjustments i'm making star uh, negative i don't have my own rsbn in the back roger okay just keep my word for it this time. so that fat line is our radial now now uh this thin line here is pointed towards our rsbn station and i'm just going to gain a little altitude there make sure this is okay we're going to use our adi here for general flight what we want to do to, to ensure we're on our radial is to have that needle, our RSBN head, heading, overlaying exactly with this needle, our course line radial, and both of them in the 12 o'clock position, i.e. the front of our aircraft there. Okay, So that's what we can do. So first we've got to fly right away from these two needles to get them to merge together. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. And we're going to get a rough heading of about 090 due east to do that. So stand by as we get that done. Okay. Do you recommend you check your radio altimeter? Yeah, it is tallying with the barom. No, it's not tallying with the barometric, and we are going to crash. Okay, thank you, Stahl. Uh, well, Stahl just reminded me we are going really low, and we're about to crash there. So it's my first time in the hood, by the way. So now we are going to add power and increase uh, altitude. We want about 3,000 feet barometric uh, for this part of the flying, so we're going to increase speed and increase our altitude. This ADI is duff style. I was direct on the center. It's duff. <laughs> I, it needs adjusting. Um, so that's just something to bear in mind. Either that or I was at a stupid alpha. Maybe I was at a stupid alpha. Well, also there's just the fact that there's quite a bit of terrain around here and we're not, you know, we're not close to the ocean. It's rather hot. Roger. Right, I am at my 3,000 feet now. Yeah, again, let me know if I'm going to crash again. Okay, we're on 090, wings level, our RSBN line and P uh, uh, radial line are still nowhere near to marrying up. Going to get some more speed. Most of the control at this point has been do done with trim rather than stick. If this works, we'll be friggin' hero star. Here it rose. <laughs> Yeah, Hawks had actually ma managed to fucking land this thing with the RFR hood down and, and no instruments on, that was pretty sick. No, that's just silly, we're not going to do that. Okay, we've skipped a few miles, now you can see that our course on our radial and our PRMG line are getting closer to merging, so we're going to turn left a bit and start drifting towards them. What we don't want to do is wait for them to merge and then turn on radial, because then we'll overshoot the radial. What we want to do is a merging turn where we complete our turn when those two needles um, get together. 
Okay, getting a bit too much speed and a bit too much altitude now, so we're just going to ease off a bit of trim and a bit of throttle down. Lose a few hundred feet would be fine. A bit more uh, left roll. So that's speed, that's altimeter barometric, that's radio altimeter. Okay, I'm going to level out there at 060 zero thereabouts just to get those lines a little closer together. Our distance, um, I've got to say, is there. We are currently 34, whatever that says, uh, 32 uh, kilometers away. Uh, actually, because we're so close, what I want to do is head east again, and I want to get those two lines to merge together quite quickly at this point. I don't want to get too close to the runway, because I want time to do my RSB and approach. So we're heading east again, keeping an eye on our altitude and our ADI. Lost some altitude there by accident. I should say this is our first time doing this, by the way. We don't have a lot of time um, to practice these kind of things, so um, it is a first time. Okay, the needles are about to merge. Let's start rolling left again. We're now 20-something kilometers away. That's really badly positioned me. As soon as we get onto those needles, we are going to turn on our, um, our, our, our glide slope. Merge, you stupid needles. How can it be? Pretty happy with the speed. Okay, they're merging now, Star. Okay, the two needles are merging now, we're going to turn into them. And as soon as we've done that, we're going to turn over to our approach mode. Okay, we are on it. And we are now heading towards the runway and on the radial. Now we're going to go to approach mode, I'm pressing now. Whoops, steady cap. we are now got some more information. What we've got is, and I'm going to have to really multitask here, look in the middle of the HSI, you can see we've got our... Um, our, our localizer there and we've got our glide slope there. I want to stick on both of them. I don't want to be erratic. I want to uh, keep on my glide slope and uh, sorry I want to keep on my localizer which is my up to down line and I want to keep level or underneath my glide slope ideally level. I say I've gone to underneath it to arrest that I'm not going to climb upwards I'm going to arrest my sink rate is all I'm going to do and that level that line will then come down and meet me. A tiny little discrepancy what you can see here is that the localizer doesn't quite tally up with the indicators on the outside of the HSI I'm going to trust the localizer uh, and here we go here comes the glide slope again I'm um, still a little low so I'm just a little more level speed is good distance is 18 kilometers not oh end of descent end of descent lights come on we are now heading to PRMG PRMG on now we've lost the um, We've lost the localizer and the glide slope, but because the lights aren't flagged, we are detecting them. So what we need to do now is uh, level off so that the glide slope comes down and head left until we reach the localizer. Fucking hell, sure. Okay, Here comes the glide slope. Just waiting for the localizer now. Also coming down on power. I'm shouting this because it's incredibly stressful and tense. Localizer's still not here. Glide slope's good. We're nearly in uh, 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 speed parameters to put the um, flaps down. We're still left rolling because we're still looking for our localizer. I hope we find it. Severely. FYI, you are within no, no one. Got it, got it, in. got it. Localizer's coming. You see, it put me... You see, the RSBN didn't quite shut up. The... Uh, RSB didn't quite tally up with the PRMG. Uh, now we've got to turn right. And this, we're going to get a nasty situation here of tanks slapping on the localizer because we've had to deviate so much. Very difficult to get back in line with that localizer, but we should do our best. We're going to get flaps down to first stage now. We've gone above the, uh, the glide slope now. It is RSBN's fault, uh, Starly. It put me completely in the wrong place for that localizer. That's nothing, kind of weird. Nothing I can do about that. Speed's going to keep going down. We are seven kilometers out now. I'm just going to have to hope I get that localizer back again. Losing glide slope. Let's arrest sink rate. Localizer is coming back. So what I want to do is start turning left now before that localizer comes back so that we can merge with it rather than crossing it. We don't want to cross it. We want to merge with it. Can gear come out now, Star? Gear's already done. Thank you. Uh, the localizer is still to the right. We can merge with this. 
a little bit of up trim. Most of my controls have been done with a trim now. Over the inner marker. Very close now. Stahl, you decide when to take my hood away. Okay. Um, based on um, when we think we would get uh, visual. Okay, yep. we've we got the localizer back. And the glide slope's good. Roll left and merge with the localizer. Glide slope's good. Pass the localizer. Going back for it. He's told me to check landing gear. It's level now. All sorts of alarm bells going on in my head. Danger warning, radar attitude. IFR hoods up and in for the landing. Flaps down to full. I forgot to put them earlier. Reducing speed. Reducing speed. Oh, I completely forgot about the SP. Right, let's hope we do this. I'm putting the air brake out for extra. Yeah, it should be good. First time in an IFR hood. Woo! Oh, and the stress starting to leave. Uh, so the reason we took the hood off there before touching down the runway, that simulates I mean, you would always get visibility in the, in the runway at some point. Quarter of a mile, half a mile, a mile, whatever that was, I don't know. Probably about half a mile, quarter of a mile. Um, you see the landing lights or whatever. Happy about that. I know it wasn't perfect. Like I said, it was the first time. We got our speeds wrong. But, I mean, it wasn't too bad. How do you feel about that, Shell? That was pretty nicely done. Hmm. Right, I'm going to go de-stress now. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you go and try it out, because you can essentially do it on single player as well. If you can't use the IFR hood, you can make it foggy or whatever. And I'll see you later.